it's the 31st of December 2022. I make my way to Bucharest's northern train station on 4 hours of sleep and a can of Red Bull. On me, a backpack full of camping supplies and a ticket to the city of Pitești. The train cabin is really fucking filthy and the power outlet doesn't work. Some boomer is watching TikToks at full volume. Two passengers behind me discuss how the corona vaccine changes your DNA based. I put myself in this situation to compensate for the lack of cool things I've done this year, something I can't forgive myself for. The desire in me to go completely feral hobo mode and make some uh, kino won over. My target? The abandoned module of the Arpekin petrol refinery, formerly one of the largest refineries in Europe, now fallen to ruin and used by the locals as a garbage dump. A perfect locale for some urbex kino. A bit of a weird antisocial thing to do, but I already spent Christmas with my family and didn't look forward to spending the New Year's destroying my liver and getting rejected by six girls in a single night. For a worrying length of the train ride, the rail was built on swampy ground or something, causing the train to tilt sideways to a rather uncomfortable angle. It felt like it could uh, tip over any minute and all I could do was clench my asshole and hope for the best. It would have been incredibly ironic too for the train to topple over right next to a village called Topoloveni. As I got closer to Pitesh, the dominating landmark associated with my target became visible. I tried to film it, but my phone's camera could only focus on the window scum. Does Chefere ever wash these fucking things? The train arrived and I made my way through the city without much incident. A lot of dogs barked at me as I passed by their owner's properties. It was kind of annoying. Unbeknownst to them, they would soon get their reckoning. Because in exactly 12 and a half hours, mankind would attempt to split the sky open with the power of low explosives. The terrain around Pitesht was quite hilly and tiring. But as soon as I got to the countryside, it leveled out allowing me to rest and recover without taking a pause from walking. I pull into some villages away from the main road, still getting barked at by dogs, people giving me weird looks. I go down this road and end up with this great shot of the tower. Hell yeah. The last bit of road leading up to the refinery is populated by RVs and there's garbage everywhere. A sign with forbidden, aggressively written on it is visible. As I get closer, it turns out it only refers to littering trash and not entry. I finally reach the compound, walking through a wheat field towards the nearest concrete structures. For the first time in the trip, I utter a word in my footage. Well, that was a route and a half. Probably not as uh, impressive as the Transfiguration one, but... I was surprised by how much variation in the elevation there was. I had to fucking climb up hills and shit. But I'm permanently here. The old refinery. Hope nobody saw me. I have traveled through some pretty dense bush here. Fucking thorns everywhere. myself tangled. Ouch, ouch. Yeah, forms aren't nice. Fuck me, there's probably a Three dogs here. I preemptively worried that uh, that might happen. I need to find a stick, but everything is like pretty shit here.
Holy shit, that's pretty metal. Fucking bones. Originally, um, looking at Google Earth, I had a plan on how I would approach visiting every building of this fucking refinery, but seeing how thick the bush is and and not knowing how to orient myself properly I'm probably going to go uh, visit shit randomly while also trying to find a camping spot because surprise surprise I want to film the fireworks in Pitești from this uh, refinery people leave their trash here Exhibit A, not mine. Another worrying thing, I hope this um, place would have been empty for uh, the new year. You know, it uh, fell on a Saturday and Sunday. People are with their families. They shouldn't be in this degenerate scrag hole. But look what I found on the ground, probably from last year. It's a firework used. So we know that people come here. It actually looks, uh, it doesn't look a year old, but who knows. It's like wrapped in cellophane. Either way, I'm gonna have to up my stealth game. Stopping at the easternmost part of the exploration area, I rest up, take a piece, eat a protein bar. I wipe my hands in between, I'm not an animal. I check out the surrounding area. I definitely would like to uh, find a way to get up there because there is a floor above but no stairs instead there's this uh, concrete remnants of a belt carrying system and I don't trust my weight my obese weight of 65 kilograms would be supported by them as I say this, I hope I found some stairs and not a dead body. Nope. The conveyor belts don't even uh, go up there. Yeah, that's where the stairs were. The other buildings nearby were pretty much inaccessible because of the dense vegetation. For some reason, every single species of weed growing here had thorns on it. There is faint graffiti here. I wonder how old. Potentially decades. Something was on fire here. There's a car door here. There are some more buildings there, but uh, I'm not fucking walking through that very dense vegetation. The easier route, and the one I took, was down a concrete road towards the northern part of the refinery. This area, I suspect, used to look more like this. Most equipment is now gone, of course. This is Romania. As I explained this fact to the camera, something in the bush suddenly moves. On those things. I stop and shit my pants. Then I take off, holding dearly onto a stick I found earlier. In the eventuality I had to fight off any dogs or snorks that would attempt to attack me. Yeah, either a gypsy or a dog. I wanna meet neither. As soon as I calm down and reckon the danger is behind me, I spot an RV parked outside the factory. Oh, 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 shit. There's an RV there. Near the factory. That's the RV I saw. Looks kind of old, but uh, could still be in function. There's clothes. That's worrying. Clothes left to dry are visible. People are here and not the kind I want to meet. Another trash dump. This place really is lovely. 
Oh, and the upper head is an operating business. Hopefully they're gone for the holidays and the weekend. It's both right now. And they have uh, high up walls. They probably won't see me, but uh, I'm gonna go to the left immediately right now. I turn left to explore another building, probably erected to serve some kind of assembly process. This fact deduced by the rubber industrial belts, I would later find buried in the rubble. Coming up. On a building. I don't know which one it is, I don't have a map in front of me. Modern colorful graffiti visible on the walls. This section is closer to the more conventional entry point of explorers. There's more water about vandalism there. It's peaceful outside. The silence is interrupted only by my steps, which break down the rubble beneath them, and the water swishing around in my canteen. Such a fucking huge area. I don't think I'm gonna be able to fucking. Oh shit! There's an underground section there. I find some kind of white substance. It looked and felt just like fresh snow when I probed it with my stick. Problem is, it uh, didn't snow this year, and the outside temperature was 10 degrees Celsius. Definitely some sort of chemical, one I didn't want to touch or breathe in. I make my way outside, climbing up small hills made of detritus. I am surrounded by concrete pillars, reminiscent of ancient structures. Fireworks sound off in the distance, likely being probed in preparation of the new year. I realize where I am and look up. The Chetsud Tower one of the tallest structures in Romania. In past years it helped to process nearly 7 million tons of oil a year. Now, a ruin used only by villagers to illegally burn trash inside of it. Once Ceausescu came to power, he started to industrialize Romania. He uh, saw what Asia was becoming. High population, making everything in the world. And he wanted to be part of that. He banned the contraceptives, wanted like 30 million Romanians. And built factories everywhere. I'm fucking balancing on rubble, so I can get a good shot here. So, he built a lot of factories got in a lot of debt and the people suffered because of the debt he was he was trying to repay it and like living standards just plummeted but anyways uh, his wife Elena Ceausescu she was pretty dumb she had this uh, image of herself as a, a brilliant scientist a chemist so a lot of uh, Romanian industry was influenced by her and we had real industry here for uh, chemical synthesis. This plant right here was built in that time to assist with that. Elena Ceausescu is a pretty uh, funny figure. Like I said, she was uh, pretty dumb, but she thought she was a, a chemical genius. She didn't know shit about chemistry. There's this funny story of her uh, referring to carbon dioxide as kodoi in Romanian. If you write CO2, it uh, reads as kodoi, but academically you know, we spelled things out as CO2 or dioxide de carbon, you know, the full name. 
but she called it Kodoi, which because of Romanian grammar can be interpreted as big tail. Elena's uh, doctorate, PhD, whatever, was fabricated by a lot of other scientists and are published under her name. They did that sort of shit in communism. But, you know, even if she was dumb, even if she didn't know how to spell CO2, she built a lot of factories. A lot of uh, people got their livelihoods because of her. And I kind of see why people, why old people, look back fondly upon those times. They were fucking robbed of many things. But they were never robbed out of employment, out of a purpose in life, even if that fucking purpose boiled down to breaking down all kings, you know, in this factory here. After the Berlin Wall fell and the Romanian Revolution got Ceausescu and Madame Ceausescu shot in the head, a lot of this stuff was, as you can see, scrapped. Uh, the company that owned this was privatized and uh, sold to the Austrians for fucking peanuts. We got ripped off real bad. So I can see why older people look back fondly upon those times, even if they were brutalized, even if they were shafted constantly. People had a purpose. Plus, their dicks used to work back then. I continue exploring the ruins, entering buildings only to find no way of getting to the superior floors without risking the collapse of the stairways or not finding stairs at all. The fall of communism in Romania broke a lot of people. That is, I guess, what happens within a dictonomy. A cold war, two sides, one is bound to win at some point, and the other bound to lose everything. Speaking of dictonomies and two ways of thinking and conflict between them, I, there is a cold war going on inside me right now. And I, I, I like, I've been uh, meaning to talk about this. On the one hand, I really need to take a shit, but on the other, I don't want to desecrate this place with the insides of my bowels. Luckily for Madame Ceausescu, I held on to my excrement and made my way to one of the most northern buildings of the compound and also a prime candidate for setting up camp. The presence of graffiti on the upper floors meant there was a way to access them. Making my way to the spot furthest away from the stairs, struggling to cope with the harsh and unstable knee-height rubble, I make an unexpected discovery. No fucking way. No fucking way. Hold on. You're not gonna fucking believe this. Hold the fuck on. <laughs> yeah, somebody was here uh, pretty recently. The Sus Among Us Slava Ukraini graffiti would, in fact, watch over my campsite. This spot would have to do, as that room was the most obscured and clean, relative to the others at least. It would be hard to spot me here, especially if lying down. The roof was partially caved in. After setting up camp, I continued exploring the building, in the process spotting another group of tourists. A man with his wife and a kid there. Not dangerous. Hopefully. <laughs> Who knows what families can be. Probably a point here. We can catch a disease here. If I stay. That is a beautiful fucking view and the uh, rubble in some areas seems to be 
in the less of an amount than the previous floor. Yeah, this is cash. Let's see how do I navigate this without breaking my ankles. I'm feeling my feet in the rebar. Who fucking brings their like toddler here? That is the still uh, functioning part of the refinery. There is no smoke or anything, so it may be closed on the holidays or the weekend. And there is Proyest, which I want to film. And there is also a business which can see me. I put down my rucksack and changed my sweaty clothes with new dry ones, so I wouldn't freeze to death. Resting up a bit right now, just so that the poop died. I'm orthodox, so. Uh -huh. But nah, if you're Catholic, I'm sorry, bro. Look at the mountains, man. I was literally there last year. Check out the fucking video, it's really great. A security guard from the nearby business spotted me. There was a guy, he was looking at me, I waved at him, he waved back. Went back to his car, hopefully not coming after me. And we had a talk. Exploration! Yo problema! Ye problema! Me get in the boom boom in Jumpeka! Sarbator fericite! He left me alone, fortunately, but I would have to hide myself for now. Don't know how they might react if they keep seeing me here. The presence of other people exploring the refinery further motivated me to lay low in my new camp. At least three different groups of people now knew of my presence. And I could hear others to the south. Exploration of the compound was unfortunately cut short. Now I would have to face arguably the hardest and most uh, stressful part of the trip. Laying down for several hours until sundown and then even more until midnight trying to avoid being spotted. Not moving around made me feel considerably colder, adding to the discomfort. I passed the time playing solitaire at first. One of the tourist groups, the couple with the kid, eventually left, and I could still hear music coming from the other group. I watched through the rubble as the guards changed shift. Hopefully the new ones weren't informed about me. I moved to the other rooms, trying to warm myself up. Smoked a few cigarettes. The sun eventually went down at around 5 pm and it got fairly dark pretty quick. From here, the footage is just pitch black. However, soon enough, the industrial grade lights from the refinery miles away kicked in. They were bright, way too bright. The camera didn't pick it up, but it was bright enough to be able to barely read a book. Turns out, darkness wouldn't afford me any advantages in sneaking around. My dark silhouette being obviously visible against the whitewashed walls of the ruin. Fuck. I test out my sleeping bag to see how warm it would be during the night. Not a lot. A bad sign. The hours slog on by. Shitposting on Twitter doesn't make them go faster. I can still hear people to the south, in the refinery, playing music. A few cars driving into the area beneath the tower. Seems like they will spend the New Year's here too. It was pretty dumb to assume I would be the only one. At 11.30, just minutes to go until the big event, I hear something dreadful. The rhythmic sound of rubble being broken under someone's steps. Clear as day, coming from the stairs, someone's approaching. Maybe a guard from the business. Perhaps they saw me smoking earlier. I get down, preparing myself to greet someone that may or may not call the police on me. The stepping stops, almost as if someone's uh, stopping to orient themselves. Then they pick up again. It keeps getting louder, more defined. 
They've moved on to the first floor, now perhaps climbing to the second. They'll be on top of me any second now. It stops. A minute passes. Two go by. Nothing. Then I realize that's not trouble breaking down under someone's feet. Those are fireworks crackling in the distance. That's not the rhythmic sound of someone's footsteps, that's my heart beating. There was no one here, just me. My mind must be cruel, playing tricks on me like that. The frequency of fireworks steadily rises as the clock approaches midnight. I get off my mattress, climb over the rubble, and make it to the room with the best view. 2022 wasn't a good year. Of course, I'm uh, glad I'm not in a trench in Bakhmut dodging quadcopters right now, but this was still a dog shit year all around. A few too many good friends who've died, a few too many wasted days, and a few too many fuck ups on my part. A lot of people got shafted hard this year all over the world, not just in this valley. And then it happens. At least in the civilized world. It's now 2023. May it be a good year. May it bring a stop to the shafting. And may God bring peace upon the world. This has been Studio Guerrilla, with the worst New Year's speech ever written. Happy New Year's, and as always, keep it real. few announcements to end the video on. First, we have a new Discord server, link in description. Secondly, Elon reinstated my Twitter, at ArthoFootJob. Thirdly, Studio Guerrilla is going into the red. We have shirts, we have donation links. Please give me money, I am going bankrupt.